My name is Mike Warren and I currently serve as the board chair for Food for Greater Elgin and I'm so excited to welcome you to this 2020 pivoted virtual online pallet to pallet event. Unfortunately we can't all be together like we have in years past celebrating uh, Food for Greater Elgin's mission, our volunteers and our restaurants and our donors. So we're going to do it virtually this year and we're so excited to celebrate all of the folks that have supported the food pantry over the years and most recently the last few months recognize our volunteers who continue to deliver the services day after day in these really challenging times and our staff um, that come to work every day and make sure that everything is the way we need it to be to serve our important clients so thanks for being here and i hope you enjoy our virtual pallet to pallet so we celebrate the mission and everyone who has done so much to make this possible. But it is still a party, and to have a real pallet to pallet party, I think you need a drink. So here's Nick's Nectar. Hi, I'm Nick, and my wife Shannon and I are volunteers at Food for Greater Elgin. If you were at last year's pallet to pallet event, you may remember this cocktail. The recipe has been a favorite of ours for several years now, and we wanted to share it with all of you. You're going to want to add roughly a half a cup of lemon juice. I would add it first. Go ahead and add that, stir it, and give it a taste. You can always add more lemon to your liking. Start with a bottle of white cranberry juice. White grape juice also works very well. Go ahead and pour that into your pitcher. After that's done, take roughly a medium cucumber, thinly sliced, add to your pitcher, stir it, and refrigerate for at least an hour. Once that's done and you're ready to serve, you can add your favorite vodka or gin to your taste and your liking and pour it over your favorite rocks glass or pint glass and ice. If you do want to make an individual, use a cup of juice, a squeeze of lemon and some muddled cucumber and you're all set. Enjoy and have a great summer. While you're mixing your drink or pouring some tea, it seems like this would be a good time to remember palate to palates of the past. Fortunately, we have photos. Enjoy.
I remember the restaurants and all of the wondrous foods. Here's Cafe Roma to put us in the mood. Food for Greater Elgin is a great organization that we've been working with over the years and unfortunately we can't get together in person this year so we're coming in to our kitchen to show you a few things and talk about our products and, uh, and support the community that way. We have our Pomodoro sauce that we have made for us and we sell it and it's really great. It takes all the work out of it. I was a skeptic at first but literally you open the jar and it's perfect. Today we're going to show you how to make a little pasta with that. and. Um, you got some water. I'd say this is about three and a half, four quarts of water. A couple of ounces of salt. Make sure the water's boiling first, otherwise it's gonna take a lot longer. It probably takes between six and 10 minutes depending on the pasta type to par cook it, meaning that you're gonna leave a little extra cooking time so that when you pull it off, you can put it into the sauce. So we've already done that and par cooked this pasta, this cavatappi, so actually this is cooked and you don't do anything to it. You don't rinse it or anything like that. You just put it on a tray and let it cool off. So this is ready to go. And all you need to do now is have your sauce ready and that goes into the sauce and tossed up and it's really simple. All right, so your pasta's all cooked. You can take that aside. Make sure you don't burn yourself, it could be hot. And we have our sauce ready now. We're gonna turn the heat on there. Got your pasta, like I said, if it's pre-cooked, that's fine. If not, you could take it right out of the boiling water and put it right into the sauce. Just make sure you drain it really good. One other thing you can do when it's boiling, uh, there's like a white foam that comes up. You can take some of that starch off with a spoon and put it into your sauce to help thicken it up a little bit. But in this case, this is it. Put the pasta right in the pan. Good enough. Now the pasta's warm, or not warm, but the sauce is. So you can stir that in a little bit if you don't want to uh, make a big mess. And now, what you don't want to do is take this pasta and put it on a plate and then just take the sauce afterwards and put it on. That's a no-no. What you want to do is cook it in the sauce for a little bit. That's why you don't want to cook it all the way first. You want to give a little extra time so that the sauce has a chance to soak into the pasta. And really, that's all it is. When I said it was simple, I wasn't kidding. Got a plate here. Can you smell that? A little cheese, a little fresh basil garnish, and there you have it. All right, so that's how simple it is. It's exciting, it's fun. You open up the jar and there it is. You don't have to really uh, do anything crazy. You get a nice wholesome meal. Uh, we have that for sale here. Soon we're coming out with the vodka sauce. Everybody's been asking. We have the dried pasta available. We have wine, like a gift set, uh, available as well. It's excellent wine. And uh, we also have our regular menu available for curbside pickup. Uh, order ahead. We have dinner Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and lunch Tuesday through Friday. So please, if you miss us, come and try it. And uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you again. Let's focus on all the work that you do to make our work possible here at Food for Greater Elgin. Let's hear from Elgin's mayor, David Captain, about the purpose and mission behind Food for Greater Elgin. I'm David Captain, mayor of the city of Elgin, Illinois. I'm very happy to be here today at Food for Greater Elgin. I can't express myself any better than this. Bob Gilliam and I worked on uh, the block grant money for the city of Elgin almost 15 years ago. And we picked three things that we thought were important. First was food. We wanted to make sure everybody in Elgin could have a good meal at the end of the day. Shelter and clothing was third. Those were the three important things that any money that was left over could go to anything else. But food was number one. I want to talk about volunteers. Pat Quinn called me about five or six years ago and said that Elgin was the number one volunteer city in the state of Illinois. We have a great volunteer network. Many of you are volunteers here at Food for Greater Elgin. You are the lifeblood that gets the food, stocks the shelves, gets the food out to the community and makes sure that we are all well, that everyone's well fed. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your work in the future. Let's work hard to get through this COVID virus situation that we have now. And let's hope that this ends for us shortly and that we can all get back to our normal lives. Again, thank you for what you do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's important to remember. Here are some details on what money and what we give as volunteer time to help contribute.
One of the great stories about Food for Greater Elgin is about how it started. A combination of the advocacy and behind-the-scenes work of Elgin Cooperative Ministries, an existing program of Willow Creek Community Church that was being relocated, and an inspirational gathering of the government and business leaders listed here to organize Food for Greater Elgin to be a source of food and hope for our communities. To these founders, we must add our sustaining partners who have been with us pretty much every year to advance our work in the communities that we serve. To the legacy of care and hope that they created in advance, we say thank you. Hi, my name is Joanne Hartman, and I'm one of the founding members of Food for Greater Elgin. And um, we are proud to say that, that it is serving 2,000 families a month. My name is Scott Richmond, and I'm a current board member of Food for Greater Elgin. I've been a board member almost since Food for Greater Elgin started back in 2011. Throughout the years, I've watched Food for Greater Elgin grow at an amazing rate from a very small organization feeding a few hundred people at the mobile pantries to now serving thousands of people every year, and we continue to grow by serving the needs of the Elgin and Dundee areas. I'm Michael Kuhn, I'm the volunteer coordinator. I've been here just about seven months and I've really loved every minute of it. The best way to volunteer is to sign up online, apply to be a volunteer, and then once you get accepted, then you are able to self-schedule your uh, shifts. Many, many volunteers that have come forward during this crisis, they've really helped fill the gap for us during this time, so just so appreciative. And uh, for those who are gonna volunteer for us in the future, can't wait to meet you. Our capacity to serve more is great. So the more support that we have in Elgin, by our donors, by our volunteers, our mission can just keep expanding and expanding. The work is important, and in light of COVID-19, our work keeps changing weekly. Direct deliveries to low-income senior communities and people infected with COVID-19 are happening weekly. Let's hear from some of the people who support our activities financially. Hi, I'm Carmen and I'm 10 years old. I started a fundraiser for Food for Greater Elgin because of my love for arts and crafts. I was doing crafts for my cousins and I showed my Aunt Amy one day. She offered to pay for some that were customized especially for her so I made some for her and I didn't want to keep the money to myself so we decided to donate to Food for Greater Elgin. My original goal was $200 and then it went up to $4,000 really, really excited because I knew it would help a lot of people and that makes me feel really good. Hi, my name is Jim DeLuga and I'm the general manager of Brilliant Subaru located right here in Elgin. So when we became a dealership, we did some scouting around the local area and we came across food for Greater Elgin. We wanted to try to pick a charity that basically kept all the money in the local community and when the folks at Food for Greater Elgin told us about their partnership with the Northern Illinois Food Bank and how a cash contribution could then be basically multiplied by purchasing directly from the food bank, then really our partnership became a no-brainer. So last year we're just coming off our sixth year of partnership for Food for Greater Elgin. We've donated in excess of $120,000 to Food for Greater Elgin and it's, it's really been a wonderful partnership for the past six years. 
and we're certainly looking forward to the next six years. Hi, I am Jeffrey Sanfilippo, Chief Executive Officer of John B. Sanfilippo and Son. Our company is a fourth generation, family run, publicly listed snack food company headquartered in Elgin, Illinois. At JBSS, our corporate philanthropic mission is to help battle hunger and encourage health and wellness in the communities where our facilities are located. To that end, we are proud to be one of the original sponsors of Food for Greater Elgin and to support their mission to provide food security to those in need. That belief is now magnified to a critical level as this unprecedented crisis has created an even stronger demand for food for families. This is our 10th year of working with Food for Greater Elgin. We will continue to support their efforts, now more than ever. A big thanks to those of you who volunteer. A big thanks to those of you who provide financial support. And a special big thanks to the dedicated staff at Food for Greater Elgin. Together, we will continue to make a difference in the lives of those who need our help the most. Thank you. And who could forget the amazing restaurants? We are all waiting for our favorites to fully reopen. Here's a few. And those memories make me think about the food. Here, our interim executive director contributing a dessert. Hi, my name is Michael Montgomery. I'm the interim executive director here at Food for Greater Elgin. And for our gala this evening, uh, the, my job is to bring the dessert. Of course, in any testing uh, experience, you've got to have dessert. And we reached back into one of my family's folklores uh, to, to pick out a dessert that was simple and yet elegant. And what my father uh, humbly called a Montgomery. It takes three ingredients. First, vanilla ice cream. You just Take some and serve it. Then, chocolate sauce. And finally, a jigger of scotch, your own choosing. It shouldn't work, but it does. Enjoy. Food for Greater Elgin is nothing but for the hundreds of volunteers who make our work possible. In February, we had 400 volunteers working with our organization. And to date, we have 200 more who have stepped up to the plate. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm inspired by our volunteers and I love working with our volunteers. So I do deeply want to thank each and every one of them. These, uh, we recently reached a milestone of having accepted the application of our 600th volunteer. And these name tags represent the volunteers that are coming in here on a weekly and a monthly basis. It looks like a mess, but it's a glorious representation of all the support that we have from our volunteers. My name is Sergio Cervantes. Uh, I've been a driver for Food for Greater Elgin for about a year. And one of the things that I love is, um, you know, just watch people you know, be happy at the moment they come in and then the moment they drive out with their shopping carts. I love what I do and I stand for the mission because I believe if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. What you see before you is a grocery cart filled with food that can feed a family for a week. But more than that, it's hope. Hope that no matter how much else goes wrong in life, you can still put food on the table. Food, help that the community is going to pull together and we're going to get through this because we're all in it together and we're all working together for a common end. Uh, this comes from the money that you give. It is the money given to us by children in schools who participated in the Change for Hunger program uh, and pitched in their pocket change every day during school to see how much they could get and together raised over $10,000. This food comes from the masks made by the ladies who live in Edgewater, uh, where, who made masks and then sold them and gave us the proceeds, also up over $10,000. What does it mean to be food insecure? 
Any one of us can be food insecure. It can only take one incident or one event to cause financial turmoil and change our living situation. If we lose our job or have medical issues, we become food insecure. We won't have the same income to meet all of our obligations and know where our food is coming from today, tomorrow, this week, or next month. The mission of Food for Greater Elgin is to make sure we provide individuals and families with the food and the ability to connect with community resources. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families. They come from all walks of life. Our impact is both immense and heartwarming. Nothing is more rewarding than seeing a young mother's tears of joy knowing that she has food for her young children. When we reflect back to other stories, a few stand out. There's the well-dressed elderly couple who used to volunteer at another food pantry, visiting us after their financial situation crashed with the economy. Our work has been tremendously rewarding over the years, and, but there is more to do. Food for Greater Elgin continues to serve the community. About 20% of the Greater Elgin community is food insecure. Monthly, we provide food to over 2,000 families. We are so grateful to all the community members and donors that continue to support our mission and cause. Together, we are giving people food and support that provides hope. Nothing is more nourishing than hope. As we come to a close of our first 2020 virtual Palette to Palette, we all hope we can get together in person next year. But I want to thank you for your time seeing this cool video. Um, I want to thank the, the, the committee that put all of this work together. We have an amazing group that year after year pulls together our Palette to Palette event. And pivoting to this online format has just been uh, an amazing experience. So thank you to them. Thank you to... Um, our uh, videographers and thank you to everyone who is passionate about Food for Greater Elgin like I am and if you need to learn more about the pantry visit our website.